Hello, I'm Lux, and this show just keeps getting awesome. And I'm Ember, and yes, another week of something that's not ponies. It does happen. Look at the playlist. I know, right? And this is our thoughts on Miraculous Adventures of Ladybug and Chat Noir, Season 2, Episodes 7 through 10. Yeah, we learned our lesson last time. Shorter number of episodes. Yeah, considering we can go on for an hour, about a half an hour episode sometimes. So we thought we'd try cutting it down to four. And just to let you know, when I said an hour and you're like, well, there's never been a recording an hour long about a single episode. That's because there was a lot of editing. But we've, on multiple occasions, hit the 60 minute mark. Usually completely by surprise. Yes. But onto these four wonderful episodes. Oh my god, this series. Not only is it getting prettier, but they are doing stuff with their formula, like breaking it. You know, in this set of episodes, it's not the, oh, you're the new person in town. Hope you enjoy being akumatized. It's people who have been around. Mm hmm And you pointed out that Marionette has led to akumatization of several people in this season. She's been responsible for it several times already, because her grandmother, the fencer, those are the two I remember for sure out of the set of six, and then in this set, she was responsible for the ice cream man. One of the most recent episodes we watched, because we don't always have the time to binge all the episodes, so we've kind of watched these four in a bit of a piecemeal. And I have a feeling... Going back to one of the last episodes we watched, episode 10 specifically, we're going to see her as the fox girl again. Alia is definitely going to come back as Reina Rouge. I love how she's like, this is so awesome. I love the camera angles they gave us. We had some really awesome camera angles. I love what they're doing with the stationary backgrounds and the action poses. It's very superhero series, like classic 70s Batman, but not cheesy. And I love the lighting they're using because they're not only like they are reusing animation, but they're redoing lighting on it or at least doing some type of post processing on it to change the colors on it. So it's not always the exact same animation because in a lot of older cartoon shows it's like nighttime, but then they show a daytime transformation sequence and you're like, yeah, they didn't have the budget to reanimate that with darker colors. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of the going back to the formula breaking the first episode out of these did an amazing job of that as the akuma picked a different target that was awesome because of a computer glitch on my side sorry ember we watched the beginning of this episode at least 10 times that's part of why we're so late in recording it because i needed a break to get over that because ember can look at me and go oh here's the plot of the episode and i would go that was only the first five seconds. Watch the episode. Gosh darn it, Ember. So this time I was pleasantly surprised. Though I was wondering, watching how upset the child was, I was like, yeah, but we're planning on akumatizing the bodyguard. Why does it look like they're going to akumatize the child? And also I love the depth this actually gives us into the bodyguard character. Because just seeing Adrian dissipated his bad mood. Yeah, it was specifically that Adrian was safe. He was right there, he was fine, all's right with the world. So the Akuma didn't have a target anymore. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly the baby was upset, so right to the baby. And I really love, uh, I'm just going to say Hawk Moth because it's the first thing that pops into my head. Ugh. I, I know you, you're not a big fan of the American name, but I love his reactions this season. So far, they have been great. They've given him more expressions. It's And the frustration levels he's going through. Well, think about it. He's been at this for a whole season and still hasn't gotten any closer. It's kind of like when the bad guy finally enacts his threats on his lower people. When he's been doing that the entire time. Like, you failed me for the last time. Next episode, you failed me for the last time. <laughs> so when is he going to fail you for the last time? Is this supposed to be a motivational thing of you're not allowed to fail anymore? Shouldn't that mean you're fired? 
Dungeon? 1,000 years dungeon, everyone? I love when the bad guys finally actually go, I'm sorry, Bill. You're no longer working for us. Oh. And also, you happen to be standing on a trap door. I am! Ah! I hope you enjoy feeding the alligators! <laughs> oh. Wrong pit. Enjoy your swim in the acid! <laughs> oh well. I lose more bills that way. <laughs> We're going to need another Timmy! <laughs> Dinosaur's reference. Check. Uh, but this series, oh my god. And how Hawk Moth was like, oh my god. Well, I'll work with it. <laughs> like, well, the Akuma already hit. I already spent the energy. So, hey, why not? You can get whatever you want. All the kid wanted was a lollipop. Uh, and... You and your turn of phrase. All the kid wanted was a lolly. Jeez. <laughs> He's a little young, but still. <laughs> the little guy was a lolly. <laughs> but moving on for anime references. Uh, yes. And, you know, when the joke's there, I usually take it. Unless it's a shot against you, those are too easy. Yeah, that happens a lot. It's one of my self-defenses. I just make it way too easy to, to um, make a joke about me, and she's like, dang it. It's no fun if there's no challenge. That or I do the whole thing like, oh, that was a good one. You weren't supposed to laugh at... <sighs> <laughs> but I'm loving how much we're seeing the return of characters because we got to see the baby almost get hit by a bus later. Not that it was awesome that he almost got hit by a bus. It was awesome that he was there again. Yeah, and the fact that the ice cream guy who became Glacier or something like that, mm -hmm. later, we actually see him in the background of several episodes and interact in a one episode. So we actually have build-up. We don't suddenly have a character out of nowhere. And we're like, yeah, sorry you visited this town. It's a weekday. we got to get some bad guys going. What? Kumatized. <laughs> yeah, because that was the joke we were making in episodes one through six. Oh, new to town? You're going to be akumatized. It's kind of a um, hazing thing. Don't worry. Ladybug and Cat Noir will take care of you. You'll be great. I'll be good. You're fine. And don't worry about any damage you will make to the town. They clear that up too. It's great. That is great to not have to worry about, oh, look, we destroyed the Eiffel Tower again. And we don't have to pay for it, unlike in Mega Tokyo. Poor Cataclysm Television. Oh, yeah. Erika, my budget! <laughs> Mega Tokyo reference chick. Please go visit it. It's still around, I know. And he's still posting, though slowly. He's also still working on the visual novel, as we said, slowly. I love what it's like the first six episodes, they were like testing out what they wanted to do with the formula, and then after this point, they started breaking parts of it, changing things up in it in a good way. Because sometimes when shows break their formula, you're like, I can, can we go back to the formula? No, but they did a good job. And they didn't do a blatant, oh, here we're blatantly changing the formula. Like when My Little Pony went, no, I don't need a letter from you every week. I need to hear about your lessons as you learn them. And your friends can also write me letters. Though Lesson Zero was one of the best episodes in that series. The meltdown episodes are always fun. So that would be, well, Applejack didn't go all the way out, but apple bucking season. Lesson zero, party of one. And what's the new phrase in this series? Twily Nanas. <laughs> so everyone who gets a kuma highs goes a little Twily Nanas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. And we've just totally dated this recording. Don't care. Well, the episode that preceded it. <laughs> Woohoo! What do you mean? Woohoo! Ah, yes, moving on to that episode. Woohoo! Would you repeat the phrase? Woohoo! <laughs> Makes me wonder, though, why did he start being a superhero? Yeah, what suddenly got him interested? Because both Adrian and Marinette were lying to their friends. Like, you have to help with the bakery again? 
you have Chinese lessons? And at first, I'm like willing to believe them, even though the teacher was like rushing them out the door. I'm like, the teacher's up to something. But I could believe Marinette and Adrian. But then the teacher got back to his office. I'm like, ah, yeah, can't believe Marinette and Adrian. Though I, I must say, I do want to actually, even though it's obviously a ripoff of Batman, I do actually want to read an owl. Owlman? Was it Owlman or Dark Owl or something? Owl Knight. Owl Knight. I want to read one of those comics just to see what it's like. Because you can take the Batman formula some interesting places. Like, in my opinion, Big O is kind of a Batman thing. Very much so. But it's so awesome. And I prefer Big O's butler. I mean, Alfred's cool and everything, but the butler in Big O, that guy knows how to wield a fully automatic machine gun, okay? You know, there is something to be said for that. Yeah, and he, he repairs a giant robot. So that's a thing. It's important to have a diverse skill set. Unlike this guy. You would think he would work out a little bit. You know, before he started doing all this heroic thing, he'd like, go to the gym. A little bit. Also, unless that suit was a collectible, it should have been made to his measurements and we shouldn't have had the whole funny thing of him trying to get the belt on. Yeah, I think they were just kind of doing the... Incredibles joke. Yeah. The beginning of that movie, it's not really the beginning of the movie, it's more like the trailers we first saw for it. And that scene actually ended up in the movie. Because that seemed a smidge off there. Because if he's been at this, it should fit better. So the question is why he decided to start doing this. I mean, he stated it was a childhood dream. But for the most part, he seems to have moved past that sort of thing. I'm thinking it's the fact that Ladybug and Cat Noir have been doing their thing for so long. And he's like, oh my god, superheroes are actually real! Which means I can be one. It's not a fantasy. Yeah. I know that the Owl Knight probably didn't have any magic, but he had top-of-the-line gadgets. It probably worked out. New karate. Probably was a gymnast or something. You know, because Batman worked his tail off to get as physically fit as he is to be able to be Batman. And just the problems that he caused uh, we've seen that in a lot of different series where someone tries to imitate the actual heroes and causes problems and they usually do one of two things they either try to scare them off or make them a temporary hero both of which are bad ideas as we saw here though i do like the ending of the episode where they're kind of like he can take care of the park well, no, he was actually being a responsible citizen. Instead of trying to climb the tree to get the cat, he called the fire department. He's watching out for his fellow citizens. He's feeding the animals. He's giving blankets to the homeless, which could be a little dangerous, but he's an adult. That's the thing. Everyday heroes help the people around them. You don't need a cape to be a hero. Also, in certain situations, a cape can be very dangerous. Also, tails. Tails can be dangerous. Though I've never actually experienced it recently. It was when I was a kid and had a Halloween costume. I loved this particular Halloween costume. I was dressed as a dinosaur. I wore that thing everywhere. <laughs> and let's just say, you have to be pretty skilled to climb a tree in this dinosaur costume. What even takes even more skill is climbing down the tree. <laughs> or you could just fall out of it like I did. <laughs> yeah. But I love the level of trickery that Mr. Damocles used as the Dark Owl. All holograms. That was amazing, especially since I thought he was going very super villain, because it was so elaborate. It was incredibly elaborate. And my main thing was, how is the kitten staying still? It's a kitten on a pillow. It's going to move. It's going to leave. It's a kitten. Or it's going to fall asleep. Not with that much noise. The bus hanging over it, all the other animals making noise. It wouldn't stay. That was just... I was like, oh my god, that's so elaborate. That's great. Well, it was probably something like one of the villains did in the comic series. Yeah, and I love how Marionette figured out where to go to find the Akuma. Lucky charm. Comic book? 
Hey, was it in like an envelope or something when it came out of nowhere? So it was a collector's edition? <laughs> Well, the thing is, the Lucky Charm item is always in Ladybug's pattern. So, for it to be the actual comic book and convey that to the audience, the cover itself couldn't be in the Ladybug pattern. So, mm. she had to open it. Ah. Because, you know, the wrapping paper for them to make the fake lollipop was in her colors. Every Lucky Charm object is in her pattern. But I'm also saying that it was it's a nice little callback to people usually keep comics in envelopes and stuff like that to preserve them it was obviously a collector's edition which just makes you wince for when she had it all rolled up yeah and i really love that scene in the container after they get captured that was awesome it was like ooh, i'm like i knew what she was going to do because as soon as they made the fake Miraculouses, I'm like, oh, they're going to give that to the villain. But the way they set it up was really well done. Because you're like, they're doing, a, they're doing an awesome job of tension in this season. Especially these last four episodes we've seen. Just so much going on there that, you know, Ladybug says, okay, close our eyes, stop talking. Detransform. Shatnoir is like, what? <laughs> and also the level of trust that they both kept their eyes closed. And that wonderful bit that we see in the flashback of Marinette closing Adrian's hand over his ring and the Kwamis recognizing each other and splitting a snack. So that's the thing. Now the Kwamis know, and so far we haven't heard either of the humans go, oh, come on, Plag. Come on, Tiki. Or, no, Tiki, shut up, don't tell me. I think it's because the Kwamis know as... Much better than the humans, but I, I would think Tiki's kind of dying to drop Marinette a hint. <laughs> because Chat Noir is totally into Ladybug, Marinette is Ladybug, and Marinette's into Adrian. Just in case you haven't been watching the past season and a half. Yeah, oh my god, this season, though. Ugh! Ow! Oh, they're they're... They're doing so... They're... Oh! <laughs> they're playing us so well. You know, Chat Noir and Marionette hanging out. Marionette learns, Oh, Chat Noir was actually serious. Okay, that means I've been hurting his feelings. Because I thought he was just playing. Okay, I have to tell him the truth. There's a boy I like. And I can't tell you who he is because we can't know anything about each other. Secret identities and all. Yeah, I wonder when they're going to break that trope. Yeah. Well, we've already broken it a little bit because Ladybug knows who Reina Rouge is because she gifted the Miraculous. Mm-hmm, which was an awesome scene. And I'm like, Elia, are you really going to do this? Are you really going to be that person who won't give back the Miraculous? Well, you can understand her at first. She had to go through the process. And I have a feeling the Kwame said those specific things for two reasons. One, he actually believes them. And two, he knew that it would trigger her giving the Miraculous back. Well, he probably hoped it would trigger it. Because, one, they haven't known each other very long. Two, as a fox Kwame, especially with his name, which is basically Trick, and the power being that of illusion. Like, here, here's another thing, though. It's like, so who, who fed the Kwame after this whole thing? Because <laughs> the Kwame went back into the thing, and he's probably pretty hungry because she used her magic power. But does a deactivated Miraculous need to be fed? I mean, we don't see the other Kwamis just hanging around the master shop. Hmm. It's kind of interesting how she chose the fox one. Cause I, didn't, I don't think I ever saw her as the fox one, but it makes sense. Especially like when I was looking at her character design. I'm like, yeah, that works for her. As it was interesting because she almost grabbed the, I want to say it was a bee instead. And then I have to wonder how much, you know, because they have the journal, how much did Marinette know about each of the objects? Because 
It was the master who let her choose which object. He didn't say which object. He said pick one and pick a person you can trust. And we also got in the Dark Owl episode a reminder of just why Papillion wants the Miraculouses, what he can do. And as if we didn't all know, they let that additional line drop to erase the past. Though to me, it almost sounded like he was wanting to go back in time to change something or alter the past, not actually wish someone back to life like we were theorizing, which he, it's basically the same thing, but the semantics actually change how the event of bringing someone back would happen. Because now if he's looking to erase the past, then he's looking to erase in a, a moment or an event. So instead of bringing them back to the current point, He's looking to change the timeline so that the event that caused his incredible unhappiness never happens. It's something a lot of us wish for. It's like, I just I just want to rewind time to fix this one thing. And then you realize, well, if that one thing hadn't happened, this good thing that happened to me recently wouldn't have happened. So, hmm. It's all a very convoluted, tangled thing. Go look at all those butterflies. <laughs> oh no, they're going to flap their wings. One thing before I go on to more of Andre the Ice Cream Man. So, from the season one finale, which was the origin story, Papillion's ability is to grant a power to his champion. How would that end up being used for good versus evil? Is a butterfly always the vehicle? Because he takes one of the butterflies in the auditorium and darkens it with his magic. Is that how the benevolent power would work? And also with the benevolent power, how do you shut it off? Because no one ever de on their own. Well, maybe it works a little bit differently when it's on the side of good. For one, maybe the butterflies stay white. Well, I'm thinking definitely the butterflies stay white if the butterflies are the vehicle. Which, the butterflies have to be the vehicle, because otherwise how would the Kwamis have recognized that those are the Akumas? And how would they have a name? And I have a feeling that if Hawkmoth slash Papaleon was benevolent, I have a feeling he would find someone who did a righteous act or had um, positive feelings. And that's the person he would choose, or they would choose. And then the power would be removed harmlessly when the job was done. So instead of this possession, here's power, make me a deal, it would be more like Marionette giving Alia the Fox Miraculous. It's like, here's a power up, when we're done, it comes back. Also, me referencing the whole butterfly flaps its wings things made me go, wait a minute, Papalion uses butterflies. <laughs> Yes, and he's trying to change things. So it's like, oh, on the nose there. But I'm still trying to figure out why they chose Marionette for Ladybug's real name. Because I hear Marionette and I think of a marionette, a puppet. So I'm like, is that just me like not getting French? Or is that them saying that she's a puppet in some way? Or she's a puppeteer, maybe? Well, the master gave her the miraculous, so she didn't have entirely free will in the matter, because she did try to give the miraculous up originally. Also, she has the yo-yo, which has a string, so there could be that tie-in, or it could be a French thing, or we could look up the common meanings of the name Marinette, because it may have something to do with the meaning of the name, like how one of the meanings of Rihanna as goddess. So it could tie back, or it could just be that they went, oh, we like that name. Oh, it's not copyrighted. Let's go. Though I don't know why you're saying it's not copyrighted reminded me of this. I wonder if the face of the computer in the owl episode is an Easter egg, like one of the creators. Because that was a nice upgrade from the very basic computerized face to mm -hmm. the, and matching the ethnicity of the butler in the Owl comics. And that also explains why Mr. Democles' assistant, you know, computer assistant, had that name because he's a huge fan 
of the comic series. Though, since we're now back to that episode, I almost thought that Marinette's final play in the office was going to be knocking over the figurine and the Dark Owl going for it because it was a rare collectible. Not that that chain of domino events would knock over the laptop. I also like a little touch about that scene is they did a really good job with the tension in it because he pulls off one of her earrings and she started de-transforming. The tension in that episode was crazy because he almost had them twice. Once when they were trapped with the whipped cream and again in his own lair. And I didn't quite catch that in the subtitles. I kind of caught that the reason he used whipped cream is because you couldn't actually swim in it. Um, it's too thick to swim in. They can neither swim in it or float in it. So you can't swim to get clear of it because of its texture. But it's dense enough that the human body doesn't float on it like it could on water. Hmm. So they don't have the opportunity to wait until they're all the way up to the ceiling to get out. Their time is much shorter. Ah, uh, should we move on to the ice cream episode? <laughs> yes, because apparently Andre's magic, uh, Andre's ice cream is magic considering what he put together. Yeah, that's another thing where I didn't quite catch the subtitles enough to really figure out what was going on. What was off about Marionette's ice cream when she first got it? Nothing. It was perfect. The problem was the boy walking towards them, while similar in Adrian's build and having some of his physical features and wearing a shirt very like Adrian's, wasn't Adrian. So she was hopeful because she thought she saw Adrian and then got totally disappointed. And it's the flavors of the ice cream that are special. So the ones he put together for the first couple, they were visiting from Italy. They were more Italian flavors. And for Maylene and Ivan, it was a combination that fit both their tastes. And for Max and Alia, who had never been before, like, ah, oh, you're new, lemon. And when he put together marionettes, it was naming for his eyes, for this, for that, actually naming off Adrian's features. Ah. Correlating them to the flavors. Okay, because I thought like he got something wrong or something. And that's why Marionette or she got it or he got it like too on, like he was like naming off features for Cat Noir instead of um Adrian. No, no, he had it spot on. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, oh, he had it spot on later when he did Adrian's. Well, spots on is one of the English transformation phrases, and I only know that because I've seen it on a lot of Zazzle t-shirts. Yeah, this was another fun episode because of, oh, the stuff they, the teasing they do in this season. And this episode with the whole Marionette and Adrian and Cat Noir and Ladybug and they're having fun with that. And also another formula break because Andre didn't turn into the monster. He was inside all the ice cream because they got rid of the ice cream before they took the ice cream scoop away from him. Because you couldn't see the ice cream scoop when you were looking at the ice cream monster. Also, thanks to the translation notes, I thought he was just coating the people in ice cream at first, not actually turning them into ice cream. So there was a little more tension there because they really needed to stop this one quick before everybody melted. I caught that too, especially when I was like, wait, they're melting? Then I started paying attention like, oh, some of the people who were frozen before have puddles underneath them where uh -oh. they're starting to melt. Like, I get it now. Yeah, this is really dangerous. I thought they were just being frozen in ice cream, not being turned into frozen ice cream. That's just creepy on a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah, for kids. <laughs> yeah. Also, the whole little spat between Cat Noir and Ladybug, that was good. Because he really was feeling hurt and just thought that she was playing. She's like, no, I'm pretend. No, I don't want to play with feelings and like he gives in and come on chat noir you got a kiss out of it one that you actually remember though uh, uh near the end when they were um ladybug and cat noir actually in his little dinner setup 
and he starts talking to her and he's getting kind of sappy and everything. I'm like, hey, Cat Noir, your Adrian's showing. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you talk to Ladybug like that from the beginning, she would probably be horribly torn in indecision because she's in love with Adrian and Cat Noir. Though I gotta say, with them doing this kind of tension, it kind of breaks another trope where that ha commonly happens a lot when the female is the lead hero and she has a secret identity and so does the main guy and she's caught between them because, oh, I like him, but I also like him. Like they're the same person. This gives us, this gives us a nice break and it allows them to see different sides of each other and fall in love with those pieces separately from the individual. Because Marionette was like, Wow, I ruined everybody's evening. I ruined my friend's evening. I ruined Chat Noir's evening. Boy, I suck. Like, yeah, Marinette, you have caused a lot of people trouble. I, I attempted to go back through the episode list and do a side-by-side -side tally. Who has more hits? You or Chloe? Because <laughs> she's had at least three this season. And she had some last season. Though I got to say the way Marinette caused the problems I accept more than the way Chloe because Chloe was just a complete donkey yeah she's a total jerk Marinette it's usually either completely accidental it happens because she's trying not to hurt someone's feelings or she's a little too wrapped up in her own emotional turmoil to see how she's affecting others I've been guilty of that one yeah, so have I. Probably a lot of us out there have been guilty of that. Like, my own feelings, and later you're like, oh, bugger. Oh my god. Oh, I need to call that person. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Just in general, I'm just going to stand by this bus stop and shake the hands of everyone who comes off and go, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? What? I'm sorry. What? 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 <laughs> Though I would love to know why that bus was out of control. I'm seeing a lot of more normal stuff that they're doing, too. They're not just going after people who've been akumatized. They're doing general helpful things. Classic superhero stuff. Like, they probably actually do get kittens out of trees and stuff like that. I guess it was also a weekend because it was during the day. Or at the very least, it was lunchtime. It's so like, when are they finding time to do this? Because they go to school. <laughs> well, early in the afternoon because school lets out while it's still daylight. And, oh boy, we need to look up Creole mythology. Yeah, because they said a lot like gremlins. Yeah, because you shouldn't feed them. And then when the teapot came up for the Lucky Charm, I was like, oh, get them wet. <laughs> Which is usually a bad idea. In the movie Gremlins, you don't want to get them wet because they multiply. And you don't want to feed them after midnight because that's when they become evil. Well, that brings up a whole list of questions that were actually kind of funnily brought up in the sequel to the first movie like so what if they have food stuck in their teeth does that count and what about traveling what happens if you change time zones so if it's midnight on the east coast and then you start traveling west can you feed them <laughs> see what i mean whole host of questions but back to these actual gremlins or what were they called uh sopatis yeah i was gonna say definitely have to look that up because that's a whole lot of interesting right there and also another break in the formula that two people akumatized one object. Because for some reason they were fighting over the one hat when they both have identical hats. Something else I noticed thanks to this episode is I think they only have like one voice actress. Gonna have to look at the credits. Who does all the kids. Because they all sound exactly the same to me. Elia's little sisters sounded a lot like the news anchor's daughter. Uh-huh, and they also sound a lot like the baby. So, I'm okay with it. It's just the thing I picked up on. I was like, is this just me, like, not doing French? Because I understand if you haven't listened to a language for a while, you miss out on the differences between certain people's voices because, you know, you're not a native to that language, so your brain kind of blends everything together. It may just be my ear not being attuned enough, or it's the same voice actress, so it's kind of a cool little thing. Oh, that reminds me of a reference in that episode. <laughs> if you watch closely, one of the DVDs Marionette holds up is that 2D animated pilot for the show. 
that was done before the show was even ever released, and it actually has Marionette and a different person that wasn't Adrian in this um, unaired pilot. You can find it online. Look it up. It's great because it's very well animated. Because, well, it was done by the same uh, Toya? The people who did Hello Kitty and who's a big animation. T-O-I-E. It was done between them and the company who eventually is doing Ladybug. And it's really awesome to go watch. Even though it's not what we're watching now, it's really cool to look at. Well, maybe we'll find a link for you. So yeah, it was a great little Easter egg. She's holding up the, like, oh, that's the animated version of her. And almost anyone would pick up on the fact that it looked like Ladybug. But yeah, it was actually the pilot. And she had turns around and hides it because, yeah, we're not going to talk about Ladybug. So she says, Ellie is going, I got this new app that can analyze voices and match people. And she's like, oh, crud. <laughs> I'm surprised Marion didn't, didn't start going, so what's going on? <laughs> Uh, yeah, because Marinette doesn't do subtle well. You knew. <laughs> but she does bring up good points that stick with Alia later. The whole, yeah, did you ever think there was a reason for the secret identity? You know, protection of their loved ones? I don't love the, I have to tell you something. You're a ladybug. <laughs> no, it's, okay, Alia, you must tell me. Are you ladybug? <laughs> Which is an excellent way to distract her. The whole conversation was very well performed and written. Uh, so anything else you want to go over? I think we've actually covered all the episodes, just in not the straightest order, but it was... Well, it wasn't nearly as convoluted as the plan to take care of the Sobtus. Yeah. I love how uh, Rena commented on that, like, isn't this a little complicated? Oh no, sometimes it's worse. <laughs> I love I love Kit Noir's reaction with her not reaction interaction with her. And I love how she's like, "Oh, you," <laughs> because unlike Ladybug, she doesn't push him off or anything. No, she just takes it as playful banter. Well, Alia's much more confident than Marinette. I also love the. Why do I look like this one girl? <laughs> why do I look like an akumatized Lena? Uh, because reasons. I can't wait to see more and more of Alia as. The um, superhero again. So the question now is, will she keep going back to Alia, but will she keep going back with the same Miraculous? Hmm. I was thinking about that myself. Well, she might come back with a different Miraculous, but I don't know. I'm thinking she might, she might, or Adrian might. But Adrian hasn't met the Master. I'm thinking Adrian might meet the Master? I think he has to at some point, but they have to be very careful about it because lots of reasons yeah one of them mainly being his father but hey well the reasons that they know about you know like oh it's dangerous to do this but now that log has seen another miraculous in use he might go oh adrian i think maybe it's time for this hmm that was for myself. I need to hide my cheese. Uh, no, I need to keep my cheese safe. He's actually putting the cheese in the safe and takes the time to say thank you that Adrian gave him that much time before transforming. Also, if you think about it, it was pretty good forethought because the creatures multiplied by eating. So not only keeping the cheese safe helped him keep his food supply and energy up, it also prevented more duplicates. So, anything else you want to quickly go over before we go? Good night, everybody. It's been an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we can probably wrap up these four episodes because this was an interesting place to stop because this was the big formula break that another miraculous is in play, which also gave Papillion the information that there are other miraculouses hidden in the city, and because he has the journal, he used an additional phrase and possibly a guardian. Yeah. So his next ones will probably be designed to flush the master out. Ah, I see what you're getting at. Definitely a good place to stop. Also look forward to another four episodes. If they're translated up somewhere, Netflix, English, French, Portuguese. French by preference, but if we're running out of time, I'll watch it in English. 
Sorry, I watched one episode in English and I did not care for it as much as the ones in French. And then there's me who likes it in English. I really like the voice actors. Disney actually did a pretty good job of hiring some nice people. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Miraculous, The Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, episodes 7 through 10. Oh, hey, welcome to the outro. Yes, we record these mostly live. Coming to you post-edited. Oh, poor Lux, I ramble so much. I have a feeling I'm the one who does more of the rambling. <laughs> Look at the shiny! So anyways, we have some shiny links for you. Links to Lux's art, Lux's Patreon, Lux's coffee, my Tumblr, uh, possibly some merchandising. You know, merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. <laughs> So, yeah, just to uh, do a little housekeeping here, go over the fine print and legalese. Coffee works in increments of three, no long-term commitments, uses PayPal, and no fees from coffee. So, $3 to you, less than $3 to the artist because PayPal takes a cut, but no fees to you. Patreon starts out at $1 a month. Yes, Patreon takes a cut. Everyone takes a cut. <laughs> and commissions. The uh, pricing varies there. What do you want? What do you got? We'll make it work. Also, before you leave and click on all those links, you can check out more of our videos. Like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Yes, I've looked at the analytics. Most of you have subscribed. The rest of you, pretty please. And if you mainly watch our videos on animation, why not check out our videos uh, about the print format? We are up to way too many episodes with no end in sight of Ember's Reading Room. A look at children's books from a slightly more grown-up perspective. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.